We begin tonight with late breaking news. Dozens of people have been evacuated from an apartment complex that is currently on fire. It is a very large fire and it's all happening on the corner of Gus Eckert over on the city's northwest side. Yeah, the night team's Camelia Juarez is live there now. Camelia, we know this is a huge fire. What's it looking like out there? Tim Courtney, that's right. I'm at the Frederick Apartments off of Fredericksburg Road. I just got Charles, uh, Chief Charles Hood has just showed up. We have not received any word on any injuries so far, but since we got here, we were seeing bright orange flames. The trees were starting to catch as well. We saw embers that were flooding, fluttering around the sky. Right now, there are over 36 units, so firefighters are very much here. They are shooting water onto the complex from above. You can see that they're they're shooting it from the top. Um, the wind is blowing. And so we've seen the wind is blowing so hard. I spoke to a woman who is worried that the fire might spread to her building. We're still waiting for official information. Again, there are a lot of people who live in the surrounding buildings that have been evacuated and they're waiting outside for some information. I've seen people crying. One family ran out with their loved one's ashes. Again, we're still waiting to learn what caused this fire, how long it's going to keep going, and if anyone was hurt. But like I said, we just saw Fire Chief Charles Hood here on the scene, so we'll hopefully get back to you with some more information. For now, Tim, Courtney. Hey, Camelli, real quick, before we let you go, I, we saw the pictures. Are you still seeing the amount of flames that, you, that we just saw in that video, or does it look like they're starting to get this under control? No, it's, it's, we're definitely seeing less flames. The, there's more smoke than there is fire. When we first got here, I mean, it was bright orange. We could see it from the highway, but right now it does look like it's calming down. Okay, we'll let you talk to the chief. He's over there, so uh, we'll get some more information as soon as we can. Yeah, and we've got another crew on the way as well, so we will continue following this, of course, on this newscast, but also on KSAT.com. One of the factors that we heard about that fire tonight was the wind, yes. and that has certainly been driving that. That is a concern for the fire department and those folks. Here's Mia with uh, more on that. Yeah, absolutely. It's been something that we've seen over the past several days, typically by sunset and even after that, we start to see those south winds really pick up in and around the San Antonio area. So let's get you a look at those current wind gusts, specifically here in Bear County. You can see at the top of the 10 p.m. hour, SA International actually recorded a wind gust upwards of about 32 miles per hour. So in between that 25 to 30 mile per hour range, definitely not helping those firefighting efforts here today. Tonight. And we have seen grass fires, brush fires spark over the past couple of days. That's just one ingredient that has been contributing to the high fire danger aspect of the forecast, as well as the dry grasses and vegetation we have in place. And the humidity has been dropping off a bit more into the afternoon and evening hours. So the fire danger will continue to be elevated in the days ahead in some way, shape or form, just because we still do have those ingredients in place and of course something that also isn't going away record challenging heat more triple digits in the forecast as well so we're going to get you a look at all of those details and talk more about it coming up a little bit later on guys thank you Mia. this next story also about fire they lost five family members all at once to a fire and now they're trying to put their pain aside to make sure their loved ones are remembered two women three children all died two weeks ago after a massive fire consumed their north side home. It was the deadliest house fire in more than a decade here in San Antonio. The grandfather, the sole survivor of that fire, just woke up in the hospital a couple days ago. The night team's Avery Everett sat down with two sisters in that family who say they're finding hope by holding on to each other. I called her easy niece, silly Lily, baby baby. <laughs> Saving every memory they can. These are some photos of our sister and the kids. Sisters Cynthia Valadez and Audrey Alexander say they're holding on to the last pieces of their family. I love these. I love all of them so much. This is some of what's left after a deadly house fire on Winding Oak Drive took their 50 year old mother Felicia, 29 year old sister Sylvia, and Sylvia's three kids 12 year old Gabriel, 10 year old Lily, and six year old Isabella. None of it feels real. One survivor, their grandfather, Fernando, still fighting to recover after a severe case of smoke inhalation. Our family is just, family's always been important. Yeah. Through good and bad, we've always just been, been a real tight family. It's like a rock. <laughs> Literally. 
and it's comforting to know the impact that each one of them individually had on people. They, they knew how much their mom loves them. She literally did anything, like everything for them. Two weeks later, this family is finding strength in one another. Everybody has their own way to grieve. There's no right or wrong. The only thing you can do wrong is keep it to yourself. Photos and drawings might only be what's left. This is the kids' artwork. But these sisters say memory still makes this family full. You, you, you can choose. You can choose to remember this, like, one incident that is life-changing, or you can choose to remember, like, the blessing of, like, getting to, to just know these people and that we are a part of them and they're a part of us. And, yeah, just, re just honoring that memory and just really tapping into, like, knowing that they are still here. It's remembering an accident, but it's also remembering the impact that they had before the accident. A beautiful way to look at their loved ones. That home that was lost has been in the family for more than two decades. It's boarded up now, and those sisters say it'll likely be another month of investigation as to find out what happened early that morning. Other stories we've been following this Sunday, an auto repair shop falling victim to a fire this afternoon. This one happened at the corner of Dolores Avenue and Culebra Road. 17 units responding to this one. Thankfully, no one hurt in the fire. Only took crews about 20 minutes to put out. Right now, we still don't know what caused that fire. And one homeowner is looking for a place to go after their mobile home uh, caught fire this afternoon. This happened at a home over in the 16,000 block of Griffin Road in Atascosa. We spoke with a person who lived in that home and a firefighter at the scene. They tell KSAT no one was home during the fire. The fire marshal still investigating what could have sparked that fire as well. San Antonio police and fire looking for a suspected arsonist tonight as well. Yes, they say the suspect set three fires this afternoon that eventually spread to two other structures. Neighbors told the night team's Camilla Juarez they believe they saw the suspect light at least one of those fires. And I, when I was backing out my yard, I saw a guy uh, Looking suspicious. This neighbor, who didn't want to be identified, headed to the store, and when he came back, his yard was on fire. He then saw that suspicious person again. I saw him going to the second house, the block house, and uh, stick his hand through the window. Smelled like a bunch of smoke. Another neighbor, Ben Martinez, says he woke up to his grandma telling him to get out of the house. You don't want to see something like that when you wake up, you know? So it's just, I mean, it's an unexplainable feeling especially when you're right behind it. Only several feet away from their home, a vacant apartment building was engulfed in flames. You don't want nothing else to burn, so you just try to do whatever you can to get everybody out and be safe. And that's what happened. Everyone made it out in time. Now San Antonio police are looking for the person or people they say set fire to that vacant apartment and two houses. Those fires spread to to other homes, leaving Nicholas Valdez and other neighbors on edge. My grandma lives next door, so we were like, we're in, that it was, the flames were going to spread over here. And fire crews put out the flames, but San Antonio Fire Chief Charles Hood says it was a close one. With the high winds and this heat, we're very fortunate we did not lose a block. Valdez hopes whoever is responsible is caught before more damage is done. Put him in jail. I mean, that's, you know, it's not right. And we also know that there were a couple other times some of those structures were also set on fire in that situation. So as they investigate that, we're also getting back to the breaking news that we started this newscast with. We're getting some new information uh, from the fire chief on that uh, massive apartment fire. Yeah, that's on Eckert Road. Let's go straight to Camelia Juarez. What did Chief Hood have to say, Camelia? Tim Courtney, Chief said that so far they have not heard of anybody missing. I'll tell, I'll, and they also said that there the fire is mostly contained you can see that it's mostly contained you can see it right there but they're also saying that tomorrow they're going to have to do another sweep through just to make sure that everybody got out safely again like i said already nobody has been reported missing but the one thing that they said is that the wind was an issue right the wind is blowing the flames the the embers onto the trees there's lots of trees in this area so that was one issue another issue was water they said that there were, uh, Chief Hood said that there were several fire hydrants that were, uh, he says, ineffective. Um, and that some of the, they had to try to get different fire hydrants, but they were further down the road. And so that's why they had to, you know, use more resources, more, 
more resources to get the fire. Another thing was that you see how it's going upward? This The apartment complex is on a hill, so to push water upward was another challenge for them. Again, um, there's the fire is mostly contained for now, and that's the, the, that's the information that we have right now. Tim, Courtney. All right, Cabelia, firefighters, they're definitely facing several challenges on that fire tonight. We'll continue to get more information and pass it on as it becomes available. Courtney. Thanks, Tim. Well, on top of all of these fires close to home, we've been monitoring a wildfire spanning 400 acres in Hayes County for more than a day now. This Texas A&M Forest Service map has been showing us the containments and it is 50% contained right now. Just a couple hours ago, for reference, it was just 30% contained. So it seems like it's going in the right direction. This all started Saturday afternoon north of San Marcos on Oak Grove Road, which is still blocked off. One home has been destroyed. About a dozen other homes still have been evacuated. The Hayes County Wildland Task Force says first responders are still working to contain those flames. Neighbors say they could feel the fire getting closer to their homes. We saw smoke and she saw flames and we could hear the crackling and the sound of it. And the wind. And the, the heat, we said, get the dogs, get out, get, get out. out, get to stay on top of this fire and all of the others we've been telling you about, you can follow us along, of course, on air, but we have this all on our website, ksat.com. Shifting gears a bit, it is time to get ready for this year's two-day high school football binge-a-thon. We're, of course, <laughs> talking about the 2023 KSAT Pigskin Classic. This year will be even bigger and better than last year because we've added an extra night of football. Yeah, there will be one game on Friday, August 25th, and three games on Saturday, August 26th. Tickets are already on sale right now, and KSAT insiders can get the VIP experience with the best seats in the house where you'll also get to hang out with us. Just scan this QR code on your screen for more information, or you can always just head to KSAT.com. All right, we are getting very close to back to school, and that means there was another back to school giveaway today. Yep, today Herf Elementary hosted their students and families to swing by the school to pick up new backpacks. The bags were packed full of supplies that the students will need to start the year off right. The first day of school for Herf will be Monday, August 15th, but for other local students, the first day is even sooner than that. Yeah, that's right. Tomorrow, the first day of classes for Edgewood Independent School District. The district is in the heart of the city's west side, so for those of you that live in that area or travel through there, do business, beware. School speeding zones will be back in effect within the district starting tomorrow. And to keep an eye out for all the buses making the frequent stops. Well, as you prepare for your kids to go back to school, experts say you need to put a tough conversation on the checklist educating your kids about fentanyl. Fentanyl is 50 times more potent than heroin and the amount a size of a pencil tip can be deadly. It has made its way into every other type of drug, often without users knowing it. Both a grieving mother and a substance use expert told me it's time to be honest with your children. Danica Summer Caprosi was 17, about to graduate high school with the full life ahead of her. She was allergic to certain foods that was causing her body pain. Her mom, Veronica, said Danica may have tried to self-medicate with pills she got through Instagram. So she took what she thought was a Percocet and um, did not wake up. She died July 20th last year, and since then, Veronica has been on a mission. To save a life, so other mothers are not sitting here in front of a camera telling their story of their child. Her advocacy has landed her in front of Governor Greg Abbott, State Rep John Lujan, and has her visiting schools educating students about fentanyl. Is the number one killer of, uh, of 18 to 50 year olds in the United States. It kills over 150 people a day, the same number that fills an average commercial airplane. Peter Pereno is the CEO of Burning Tree Programs, running substance abuse facilities in Texas. Fentanyl has overtaken his work and personal life. He lost a close friend to fentanyl just last week. Got some pills off of the street, which he didn't think was fentanyl. And, uh, you know, he said, I had a friend a year ago, was on medical marijuana, ran out, went and bought some marijuana off the street. It was tainted with fentanyl and he died. He says it's now laced into every type of drug. And that's what he tells his 16 year old son. You don't want to try and scare your kids. You just want to provide them with the facts, right? Every time they use drugs, um, they're rolling the dice. They're playing Russian roulette. Talk to them. Be sincere. 
don't yell at them. They both say every teenager should be carrying Narcan with them so they can help reverse an overdose if they see one. I need parents to talk to their children because they need to hear, hear me, hear my cries. Two weeks ago, we had a frightening fentanyl town hall discussion right here on KSAT 12. We spoke with several people who have had personal battles with fentanyl and some like this mother who have lost loved ones. The entire goal of that special, start a conversation with your kids and loved ones about the dangers of this deadly drug. You can watch that special right now on our website by just scanning the QR code on your screen. Still to come on the night beat, combating low recruitment. Military enlistment numbers are falling short of goals. In about 20 minutes, how the armed forces are overcoming adversity to still bring in the best. Plus, a target on her back. Scammers have come after a heartbroken woman desperate to find her dogs. What she wants other pet owners to know so they don't put their own safety at risk. All right, welcome back. Let's go outside with live cam here tonight. Temperature still around that 90 degree mark. It has no doubt been a very hot stretch of days still here across South Central Texas, and that is still going to be the theme as we gear up for the upcoming work week. In fact, today we actually tied the existing record high for the day. Let's get you a look at that almanac data. 105 degrees was the daytime high. You can see we did tie the record of 105 that was set back in 2013. Also well above the average for this time of year still that currently is about 97. Now today also marked the 41st triple digit day that we've seen here in San Antonio so far this year. This now ties 2013 for the fourth largest number of those triple digit days that we've seen in a given year. And we're just going to tack on to that in the days ahead, all starting with tomorrow. So yes, a few ISDs starting school, Edgewood, as well as Lavernia, I believe. First thing tomorrow morning, we're going to start off in the upper 70s near about 80 degrees with a few clouds out there, kind of like what we've seen over the past several mornings. And then by lunchtime already, plenty of sunshine. Temperatures climbing into the 90s because of that, around 90 94 and then later into the afternoon, still more sunshine and you can see those daytime highs once again going to climb 105 yet again is the forecasted high temperature here in San Antonio 102 in Bulverde 104 in Canyon Lake 106 in Floresville stretching over to Nixon 106 in Pleasanton as well 105 in Hondo for that Monday afternoon high and you can see over the next several days we are going to come close to top or potentially even break some more existing record highs, especially if that 105 verifies tomorrow afternoon. That is going to break the record for tomorrow of 104, also set back in 2013. And that's still going to be the trend. Copy and paste each and every day, maybe even seeing that afternoon temperature build by a degree or two as this big blue H heat high pressure actually strengthens a bit more as it continues to to settle over the state of Texas. You can see where it is right now. We are all quiet here in South Central Texas and across the majority of the state. A little bit of a different story though across portions of the upper Midwest. There's a low pressure system approaching the Great Lakes region, sparking some severe weather near Illinois as well as Indiana. Watch what happens though as we advance this on in time over the next seven days. You can see that high pressure still being the main driver of our weather pattern here in town and across South South Texas. So that means that all of the rain making energy is deflected around us. So still hot and still dry. Of course, that will cause more elevated fire danger concerns. We do have a red flag warning that has officially been issued for counties in pink through tomorrow, but it is a good idea just across the region to stray away from any outdoor burning, any activities that could spark an open flame outdoors, because you can see here on that seven day, no notable rain chances still in the forecast, so we'll monitor maybe next week for a subtle pattern change. Still a little early to talk exact details, but just know it's something we'll be monitoring. And you've seen with this newscast how dangerous that can be. Exactly. So we've got a lot of fires that we're talking about, and of course we will get you another update on that large apartment fire that we were covering earlier. We'll be right back.
Dallas Cowboys were off today, but there's still plenty to talk about as they get ready for their third week of training camp. And the Texas Rangers are hoping for the best when it comes to one of their young stars for a preview of tonight's instant replay. Joining us in house once again, Larry Ramirez. It's nice to be back in house. I tell nice you that, to see you here. but you know what's not nice is the fact that Josh Young from MacArthur High School here in San Antonio got hurt today. So Josh Young has been a mainstay in one of baseball's best lineups, and he's a key reason the Rangers are in first place coming up tonight on Instant Replay. We had an x-ray and he's got a fractured uh, left thumb there. And, you know, that's all I can give you right now. That's Rangers skipper Bruce Bochy telling the media that Josh Young has a fractured left thumb. So what's next in the process for Young as the Rangers figure out what to do? Mary Rominger will have the latest. There seems to be less music during practice. Is that God, why did you bring that up? I mean, I mean what are you trying to do? You don't, you don't like it? I might be. Tell you what, a lot of players come to me about that. I'm coming after you. Uh, Mike McCarthy having some fun with a member of the media when he was asked about not playing music during practice at training camp, but Coach has a very good reason why he's not blasting beats over the loudspeakers in Oxnard. Yeah, it's a lot of energy because he didn't play here for all those years he was here, so the fans love him. Houston Texans feel they got it right when they hired D'Amico Ryans to be their next head coach. And from listening to players like corner Tavi Thomas, they certainly did. D'Amico is a player's coach, and they love it. Plus, we're talking SAFC, the Women's World Cup. And what should the Cowboys do with Dak Prescott in the preseason? Play him or sit him? That's our poll question tonight. That, and you'll get to know the latest member of KSAT 12 sports team. It's all tonight on Instant Replay. Sit him and wrap him in bubble wrap. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thanks, Larry. Yep. We'll see you again in a bit. Still to come, recruitment numbers are nearing record lows for the military. After the break, find out how the armed forces are still trying to bring in the best of the best to serve. Plus, a warning for others. A San Antonio pet owner is distraught after falling victim to a scam. What she says to do so this doesn't happen to you. I want to get you back out to that breaking news we've been telling you about a large apartment fire over on the northwest side off of Gus Eckert tonight. Yeah, we're going to go back to our Camelia Juarez who's been out there all night and we know Camelia that you just heard from Fire Chief Charles Hood. That's right, Tim and Courtney. I'm here at the Frederick Apartments off of Fredericksburg Road. It was a three story apartment that was burned down again. The fire has been contained, but Chief uh, Fire Chief Charles Hood has more about what happened tonight. It's a three story unit building, and so we have lost this whole building. So as you can see, the fire behind us, it was uh, really advanced when we got here. We had challenges with the wind. We had challenges with the, the elevation and we had water issues, supply issues as far as trying to get water on this fire. Uh, right now we're reporting um, that um, the building has not been cleared completely, so we're going to have to go in at some point in time and do a secondary search on that third floor and the rest of the building. Uh, at the advanced stages of the fire, we were unable to do that and had to go defensive immediately. We have evacuated everyone and we have via buses that are going to come out and we can put them in. We're going to have to figure out a place for these people to live tonight and a lot of people here have lost all of their belongings, so it's very sad. That's right. We've seen a lot of people walking around uh, crying. You know, they have nowhere to stay tonight. But for now, I'll bring take it back to you in the studio. Tim, Courtney. Yeah, thank you, Camelia. Definitely be keeping an eye on that story as we learn more throughout the coming hours. Something we've been talking a lot about is that wind that made it so difficult. Yeah. Um, they called it a wind fueled fire when Chief Hood was talking about that. Mia, we heard earlier it was 25 mile per hour winds. Yeah, around 25 to 30 miles per hour. That's generally been the range of those wind gusts that we've seen here in San Antonio over the past couple of hours, which is also a trend that we've seen over the past several days. Winds picking up a bit more in the evenings. And of course, when you come Combine that with the dry vegetation in place as well as the dropping dew points, lower humidity in the afternoon and evening hours. Of course, that creates that high fire danger as well. And something else, the heat. Again, all of South Central Texas getting into the triple digits this afternoon. 105 in town, 109 in Carrizo Springs, 110. The high temperature out west in Del Rio, they actually broke a record of 107 that was set back in the 1960s right now 
overall still warm out there. Upper 80s and low 90s across the board here in San Antonio. We are not finished with the record challenging heat. Daily triple digits continue all the way through the upcoming work week and of course that high fire danger as well. So we'll have another full look at everything that we're expecting when it comes to a very hot forecast in just a few. Thanks, Mia. The military is facing a significant challenge as recruitment numbers continue to fall short of goals. Yeah, each branch launching new strategies to combat that. But as Jonathan Cotto reports, though numbers are down, the armed forces are not lowering their standards. Based on the information we have right now, um, all the services are struggling <laughs> pretty bad. Senior Master Sergeant Brandon Carver wouldn't say the Air Force recruiting effort is in a crisis, but they are facing large challenges. Unfortunately, it looks like we will miss our enlisted sessions goal by about 12% this year. The Army is expected to recruit 55,000 new soldiers this year, 10,000 short of their goal. The Navy is expected to be around 6,000 enlistees short. Carver says the Air Force aims at filling 27,000 airmen in over 130 careers. So of that 27,000, we're currently seeing at about 20,000 airmen that we've sent to basic military training right here in Lackland. About 10,000 airmen short for both active and reserve components. A contributing factor to the recruitment shortage, medical eligibility. Only about one in four of our target demographic applicants are qualified based on medical law violations, those kind of things, and they need what's called a waiver. He also says another problem is unfamiliarity. So if you look in 1995, about 40 percent of all people that were able to serve had either had a family member or a parent or someone in the military that they knew. If you take that to today's standards, we only have about 10 percent. So unfortunately, what we're seeing is just a lack of information about what we do um, as a military as a whole, and that's, that's hurting us. Although the military is facing recruitment challenges, Carver says not only is an all-volunteer force sustainable, it's vital to their success, and will continue to seek out the most qualified individuals. So there's a mindset that um, sometimes we're just trying to fill a number, right? And that's absolutely wrong. We're trying to do is put the right person in the right job. We want people that are passionate about what they're doing. While the Marine Corps and the Space Force expect to meet their numbers, the Department of Defense says the Army, Navy, and Air Force will not make enlistment goals this year. Reporting front and center, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Well, this fall, every consumer cell phone will be part of a national emergency alert test. The Federal Emergency Management Agency and the Federal Communication Commission scheduled this test for October 4th at 1.20 Central Time. FEMA and the FCC said they're testing the alert to make sure all systems are ready in case of a national emergency, and this alert needs to be sent to the public. The alert will read, this is a test of the National Wireless Emergency Alert System. No action is needed. End quote. This will be the second time such an alert will be tested nationwide. All radios and TVs will be tested that day, too, and that test will last about a minute long. Three people are dead and two more are in the hospital after an overnight shooting in Washington, D.C. Metro Police say it happened Saturday night in a neighborhood near the D.C. Maryland border. Two men and a woman pronounced dead at the scene. The other two victims rushed to a hospital. Acting Metro Police Chief Pamela Smith says there's people out there who know more about the shooting. She also says the city is not a war zone. Let me be clear. This gun violence has to stop. It is, it, is, it is incredibly frustrating. We know that someone in the community knows what is happening. Please reach out and provide us with any information that we can in order to ensure that our citizens, our residents are safe in their communities. It's still unclear right now what led up to the violence there and no arrests have been made in that shooting. Two California women are dead and three others hurt after an explosion destroyed a boat. Police say it all happened while the boat was being refueled. People nearby say they heard that explosion minutes before first responders arrived. The two women that died were in their 60s. The other three people were all sent to the hospital with major burns. A San Antonio woman desperate to find her dogs was the target of a scam. Next on the night beat, what she's telling other pet owners to do so this doesn't happen to them.